The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, this is Bill O'Brien, and this is The Art of Politics. It's a show I co-host with my good friend and, and political opponent, Ken Gidge. He's a representative of Nashua. Ken, are how are, are you today? You? And it's a special show because we have a special guest today. We have Pete Silver, uh, the Honorable Pete Silver, uh, representative uh, in past terms from Nashua, and he's running again for in a special election here in Nashua. Welcome, Pete. Glad, glad to be here. You know, losing is is kind of hard because you know a lot of the Puccinati is going to beat you because you are a, a Republican. You know, and of course now Democrats. Well, welcome, Pete. I yeah. mean, uh, it's good to be here. You, you know, it'd be really interesting, I think, for a lot of uh, viewers, if you could just give a kind of general background of what your involvement has been up at the state house and in politics yeah. here in Nashville. Well. Um, as you know, that's how I first met Bill. I started out in 2008, which was an Obama year. And uh, I was on judiciary, which is a, a good way to get your feet wet, uh, right? And it is. Jumped right into the fire with judiciary. At the time, we had the gay marriage debates. We had uh, the pro notification. Um, it was a, a lot of very controversial um, social issues being on judiciary. And... Um, the second term was the big wave that we had in 2010 when I got in Nashua, I believe there were five Republicans out of 28 um, seats. And then we changed that to 22 Republicans out of 28 seats the following term. And now this time it went back to three Republicans out of 27. But I, again, a lot of that to me was to do with the um, there was a thousand same-day registrars just in my ward alone, and they all went. Well, do you mean the Obama. popularity of uh, President Barack Obama is what wiped out the Republicans? Is that what you're saying? Or? Yeah, which I still I, am trying I to figure that out for a minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I still can't figure that one out. You, I guess free phones go a long way. Pardon me? Free phones go a long way, I guess. Oh, okay. All right, so you're blaming? No, no. It, of course. Uh, I know Mr. O'Brien, when, uh, when our candidate, the Democrat comes on, is going to go after her a little, but let me go after you a little. Come uh, on. Are you saying free phones? You're saying that it wasn't because you guys had caused such a ruckus up there in uh, the State House that uh, the reason why you just lost is so many? Uh, well, in all actuality, I had more votes than I ever had in Ward 8. More votes than I ever had, and I still, I still lost. But as far as my popularity was concerned, for the people who paid attention to what goes on oh. to their taxes and everything else, they still came out and voted it's for It's just me. the majority didn't pay attention. In, 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 in your first run, what were the issues that came up? And do you see any of these issues as still um, with us in, well, in 2013? I think that they tried, they're, they're always tried the pro-notification thing to try to repeal that, which we took back. Um, I think that constantly, obviously, it's all about spending. I mean, that's not, never going to change. I mean, that's the major thing is, um, as I said in my first campaign, and we've, we've reached that teetering point, you know, like the old saying goes, you know, when there's more people riding the cart than pulling it, you get a problem. And that's never going to change. So, so we're, you, this is a special election. It's going to be for the second half of the, this term we're in now. Right. Um, there, there is some indication, and we're just uh, actually at the end of the filing period, there is some indication that parental notification repeal will come up. Um, the bathroom bill will come up. This is when we're. Yeah, well, that's a beauty. Yeah, oh, that, this that's is this is not fair. Um, on, I know guys. it isn't. That's why I, that's why it lost. That's, but I let know, me tell you what it is. is. <laughs> yeah. me, oh, come let me, on. Let me tell you what it is. This is a this, this is, is a bill that would allow any individual to declare their their um, sexual identity. They, they they all it has to be is a subjective declaration. You could be, for example, you know. Uh, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old boy, and you could just say, my sexual identity today is uh, such that would lead me to go into the girls' bathroom. Um, and that piece of legislation is, I gather, going to come up again. It came up when we were on judiciary together. But, but of course, you do realize in some colleges now, they do have common bathrooms for both men and women in the same room. You do know that. 
this is taking place all over Europe. This is coming to the United States. It doesn't seem to be can such a big deal. Can but it seems to be a, a big deal thing? for you guys. I didn't say that. I, 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 I don't feel that the way a lot of people do on that. But for you just to say, anybody can say, gee, I feel like I'm a girl today, so I'm going to the women's bathroom. That's not... What it was actually, about. That's how it yeah, starts. It's, actually, it is. You that's can declare your it, sexual preference. So it, why was this brought up? I mean... Well, because it's one of those issues that we have heard is going to come up in the second half of what is going turning out to be a fairly radical term in the House of, of Democrat control. Well, hold on a second. Why did it come up in the first place? Why don't you tell our listeners why it came up? There was a man who uh, was you, having a why change, did it come, why did a it come sexual up? change. Why did it come yeah. up? You want to know why it came up? Because a, a lot of homosexual a money came in from Colorado in particular. Elected homosexual a, money? Yes, and money, money that was to support... 612 home, it was called. Yeah, it, it was to support uh, representatives who would support homosexual marriage, came in from... Uh, particularly Colorado, so got a really you radical bunch. Gay marriage? Got a, a bunch of I radical representatives marriage. elected, and yeah, part of being a radical representative, you come up with radical legislation. Well, you don't like believe this. in gay marriage? Absolutely not. I believe in traditional marriage. Okay, so you don't believe that two people who love one another should get married? No, what, what I believe is so you're not against gays. Not, not at all. Not at all. Okay. What, what, what I'm against is that we have to change everything all the time to be politically correct. So. You know, I, I, t just to go one step further, I can remember saying, you know, I always wanted to be a professional basketball player, I'm too short, so let's lower all the hoops to be six feet so I can dunk. The marriage is between a man and a woman traditionally, that's how it is. They can have civil unions, which they had, but again, the camel's nose under the tent, it doesn't stop there. You go from gay marriage, now you're going to go to the bathroom bill, as we talked about. It, that's the problem with this. It's not, when we were elected here, I thought, it's called a representative. And we, re we have the most representative state in the whole country. Absolutely. So I defy, depending upon what area you live, but if you go throughout the state, when you take your 3,600 or whatever it is that we represent, talk to the people and see what the bulk is. You know, when I went around with the take pro notification, for example, when you explain that to somebody, that's, that's okay, not... Stay on one subject, because you're, you're jumping from subject to subject. Well, if you go with the gay marriage, I, okay. what, what I did, if they weren't boilerplate things, like groups sending me emails, every single subject that I can remember that I pushed the button on, was I never had a conscience on it because it was clear because it was what the people want to do anyways. I don't count if some group from Colorado sends me something. If, if somebody says, I'm Bob Jones and I live on... 22 Maysfield Road, and this is what I think. I know that guy's really noise in my district. That's a real The poll concern. said in New Hampshire it was 60% agreed that may, gay marriage was okay. And where did they poll? That's the What thing. did they poll? Okay, so if the poll went to you, your, yeah, go, no, no, your, your side. Your age, can, can we, you know, first of all, Brother Gidge here has a tradition of just coming out with figures, but well, we're going we're gonna to accurate. So we have, oh, by yeah. the way, we, we do have the same yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is we're, 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 we're trying to get together here. Yeah, I know. It's just, we're it's just really trying. Yeah. So, so, you know, whether it's 60% or 16%, we'll never know. But, oh, but no, one no, of the things, it's 60%. But one of, one of the things that is fairly clear is you can drive results to, uh, with polls. For example, if you ask the question, do you want to discriminate against your relatives who are homosexual exactly. by not allowing them to have a loving relationship with their companion, most of us are going to say, absolutely not. On the other hand, if, if the question is asked, do you want to undermine traditional marriage, which is the, the uh, uh, strongest institution, the necessary institution for raising children, most people are going to say, no, I don't want to do that. And one could say <laughs> that down through history, is probably 9% of the population has been gay, Nine percent. No, it's nine. Quoted, it's, no, nine percent. One percent. It's not nine, but, Ken. It's not nine. It's really? one. And how would you know? Because there's been studies of this, and we and sat through judiciary with all the you know, facts. We sat through all the, the for days. On it. You know, you hear it's that. So just one percent. One percent. It's actually, you know, and, and it's. Would you want guys want to bet? Hundred dollars to your favorite charity is more than one percent. 
Well, it ain't 9%. It isn't 9%. All right, we'll say 6. <laughs> we'll say 6. Do I hear 3? All right, okay. No, no, okay. I'll tell you. Three, you go say three. 1, I say 6. Anyone in between? $100 to your favorite charity. No, no, no. Are you no, in for no, the deal? No, it's gone no, up when I was 3 years old. I don't know. Yeah, first because good. this All is right. a shifting percentage. <laughs> it certainly is shifting. $100, $50. <laughs> you got to have fun. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, but... Personally, look, it was a hard thing for me also. I had, look, I'm from New Hampshire. I'm a little kid. What do I know? And all of a sudden, these things started taking place until a gentleman stood up who is gay and who's a state representative, told a story about him trying to adopt a child. And, uh, you know, he's an attorney, and, uh, and they wouldn't let him because he had a partner. And, uh, and, and, and honestly, they, this is what she said why? You're not married. If you were married, you could, you could adopt the child. And he goes, well, that's an impossibility. We can't get married up here. There was a civil union. So when he told that story and he told about the two daughters he had, uh, I at that point said, OK, if a person loves a person, it's not my business. And up here, it's live free or die. And guess what? Look, you know, there's so much we could say in opposition to that, which would just bring common sense to the issue. But one of the things I really do want to do is turn back to, to Pete and, and ask him whether or not he thinks these issues, such as parental notification and, and the bathroom bill, uh, will be coming up. And, and is that the choice that your voters in your Ward 8 have, which is they can either elect somebody who's going to say, for example, if you're feeling female today, even though you're uh, a husky guy, you can go into the girls' room. Or if, if you uh, are a parent with teenage daughters, you're gonna, you have a choice to elect someone who's going to vote to repeal parental notification or, or, or vote for you. Yeah, the, the unfortunate thing with all that we do is that the only time the voters really get educated, because the media doesn't do their job, is we're knocking on the door and telling these stories. So when you bring that to their attention, as I did with pro-notification. Um, the bathroom bill is just, that wasn't really part of a campaign, but when it would come up, I mean, first of all, off the bat, people don't believe you. They think you're, that can't be true. There's no way that that's possible. And it's possible. not true the way Mr. O'Brien said it. There was over one person. This is what it was about. Which, which, which There was an individual who no longer is at a representative, basically she or he, brought it up, had uh, help, got it through, whereby if a man believes truly he is a woman and goes through changes, guess what? Where would he or can, she can, go? But they're doing so you call it. That, but that's that, not going to be brought up. I don't know. What, that, that wasn't the bill. It wasn't, you know, they have an operation, they go through changes. It's basically entirely subjective. And the reason it's being brought up is I want the voters of Ward 8 to know that they have a choice here. A choice between someone who's going to protect our children and a choice between someone who's going to just let these kind of social goals of let's make sure everybody's feeling good about things um, drive a, uh, a vote that allows men to go into girls' But, you, you know, I mean, come on now, guys, because that's not really fair. Because this well, no, isn't they're doing a, this it now. There's, there's a school election. that did it. I think it's Colorado. They did it in the school where they, they, yeah. one of the kids went there, and, and the, the parent, the six-year-old kid, feels that he's really a girl, and I forget the name. I heard the whole story. It's another change in the bathroom, the whole thing that he gets to go in there. I mean, that's how these things get started. So other legislators pick up on stuff like that. They get help, and they try to... A good example. When we had, the other one we had that was outrageous was the suicide pill, death with dignity, quote-unquote. We actually had a woman come all the way from Seattle, registered Democrat. She met myself, and I forget who else was with me, and um, she came in on her own dime, a lawyer, and she said, I want to tell you guys something right now. I'm a diehard Obama supporter right down the line, but this one right here is a no-go because they already had it. They put it through there. So there's people that come from other states that come to our states and they introduce legislation and give them or try to stop it because of... And what you're saying, the majority of these people, the way you're talking, uh, Democrats coming in, trying, and the fact is there's more Republicans coming in to to the state of New Hampshire trying to change ones. And more money came into the state of New Hampshire, I believe, from the Republican Party uh, against Obama. It, it just, this just isn't the case, Ken. 
It really is. Uh, you caught me and, again. And, 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 <laughs> I, I, I got I, You see, I, I do. Get, I get so, caught. I tried. So, you know. so, so let me just, so people will understand the facts. From 1980 through the election of 2010, of the 18 largest contributors to national and state cam campaigns, 16 of them were labor unions. And of all those labor unions, only one gave as much as 6% to Republicans. The rest of the, them, some to, had so no money going we to go, Republicans. You know, this, this some, is a some, good show. Some, labor unions some, well, some almost reached 6%. So it, it, when you talk about where the money is in politics, it comes Why through. are the unions? I'm kind of missing a point here because I'm a union person, and we will have. I believe David Lang will be coming on, and who has worked with you and a union uh, boss. Union boss, okay. And yeah. uh, what I'm trying to figure is, you don't think unions have played a a, a, a good part in our country, and and b why are they, they against right Republicans? Tell me. How could the good union people from the teachers to the firemen to the electrical to the plumbing union to all these unions don't like Republicans? <laughs> well, like I said, they did a good job in Detroit. Look what happened there. The, the bottom line is the way the union Detroit thing is going on. Detroit had up, nothing to do with unions. Oh, no, it hasn't, has it? No, there was a million something in Detroit. Now it's on a 500 in, uh, no, people. Over a million people in Detroit is now 565,000 people. And those are the real numbers. And so guess what? No, Detroit went case. under called because white flight. Of over, but in this case, it's black and white leaving. Over their, their pension system crushed them. I just saw this morning they, the, the government's given $100 million to send a special, Obama sent a special uh, task force, whatever, out there. And it, and it was all because of the unions. So you're blaming the unions for Detroit? Well, what they did is they... There's, there's other cities that had similar population decline but weren't captured by public employee unions who were bilking the ta hard-working taxpayers. Well, That's that, what happened. You can't Detroit. lose a half a million people and, and still try to run a city the way... It, it, from the lights to the police. You can't do that. The income's not coming in. So, yeah, it's, it's, so it's, why are you it's saying it was the unions who ran everybody yeah, out? You can't. It's, the, can't. It's, it's, it's not as if the aliens came and kidnapped half the, the people. Um, they, well, left, think that. They, they, they left because <laughs> the city the was misgoverned. It was run by Democrats from 1960 on, and, and with the patronage and the acquisition... Me, Detroit was what? Was, it had a de Democrat... Detroit was what? It had, what was Detroit? What was the big the money in Detroit? In the 1950s... What was the big money in Detroit? In the 1950s, Automobiles? it was the richest city in the country. Right. It was an automobile? Just like Pittsburgh was a rich city because of a steel industry, manufacturing change. Pittsburgh, because it was, had Republican governance, made the oh, transition to a please. different economy. No, it's when Detroit Republicans and Democrats start working together, that's when things change. So, no, to, And that's one of the reasons why we do the show, is, is because we're trying, though we may Ken, argue, Ken, all right? 60 years, almost, of, of, of Democrat governance. How many cars are they it, building in Detroit? Yeah, how many steel mills are in Pittsburgh? Why aren't they building they may, there? That's, a, that's the good question. That's the good question. <laughs> why do you think? Why, well, are they, why no, are they in but, Tennessee? Are you, but you're saying why, why do they go to right to work? Well, states? I mean, but but why are you saying that is a? It's the unions, Look, and you're not considering here's the, deal with they, the union the, thing. This is the, the auto part industry has left Detroit. I'm glad we talked about this. Here's the thing with unions that, that kills me. I have a lot of friends that are teachers, policemen, firemen, the whole deal. My daughter's marrying a fireman on Saturday. The the union, the problem with the the public union part of it is that it'd be great to they risk their lives, give them all millions of dollars. It's just, let's play, it's not monopoly money. There's only so much you can get. So I know myself, I took a beating on my 401k. The private sector takes the way that it works in the economy. Exactly what happened in Detroit, they ignored those things and kept putting the money in and guaranteeing these pensions, which we went through in this state, which we're going through now. It doesn't mean that we don't like firemen, police, and teachers. There's nothing to do with that. The bottom line is, you got to pay for it. Where is it going to come from? And eventually, if guys like us that work and we, they soak everything out of us, that there's nothing left. Where, where's the rest going to no, come I, from? I, I like the way how everyone, you guys have the 
the way as the Republicans have the way of saying, well, you know, it's the unions. They're bulk, bulking us. They're, they're taking stuff away from us. Millions, how are we going to pay for it? Well, you want to know something? It has been paid for. People have been saved. Police have helped people. And guess what? The contracts then is what was then. And we all know that the contracts now that are being for unions are now coming way, 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 way down. They're paying more for insurance. They're not, they're, their retirements, so they have to work longer. I mean, things are, things are changing. And that's both Republicans and Democrats that, that are, are causing this to happen. The, Do can, I can agree just, with everything the unions have done? Can, no. That just isn't true. You know, I, 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 there's, there's so many small things you say when you talk that aren't true, but the, the biggest one was when you said Republicans and Democrats were doing this. When we were there, and, and T.P. was in leadership, it was Republicans alone. There were no Democrat votes at all helping us achieve pension reform. Well, obvi Public employee obviously pension reform. there was a couple Democrat votes. Well, there might have been one. It might have been you because <laughs> yeah. I, you're an independent thinker. That's why I enjoy talking with you so much. But, and there might have been a few others. But one of the characteristics of that term was how the, the Democrats in the New Hampshire House voted as a block to avoid any sort of labor regulation, pu public employee pension reform. But you guys, look, I've, I've used this before. Here, here is Ken Gitch. He's got a uh, boy in college. Uh, he needs a car to drive up and forth Concord. He's got a, you know, his wife is a teacher, got a job. Uh, everything is fine. Everybody's paying for everything. And all of a sudden, the wife loses the job. The car breaks down. You can't put your, your son towards calls. But you still have these bills coming in. That's exactly what happened to us when our great Bush took us to what war? That's how many trillions of dollars? Uh, this be, did this, he run the economy the, down? Now, you guys are Republicans. Don't that, you that understand? Hillary Clinton and John Kerry and all the Democrat senators supported? Would that be the same I'm trying to tie that into the unions. I'm, yeah, I'm, right. I'm get lost there. You know, I did lose my job last year, and I did go through a four, three or four months without a paycheck. And we did have to make cuts. We did have to do things. And that's how a normal household runs. You, you do with the adversity. But when you get some of these guaranteed benefits, that they don't deal with any adversity. They just keep getting it and keep getting it and keep getting it. And we can't, we can't give it is the point. It's not there to give. Once you run out of it, it would be like Detroit. When the, when the guy, the poor fireman that worked his whole life and he goes to cash his check and it bounces, then all of a sudden, hey, you know what? Now I've got to do something. Well, I think, I think we, we probably may agree to a, a degree of Detroit because Detroit happens to be probably – you know, something that you don't have to put under, you know, a, a microscope. You can look at, we can look at it as a telescope. When you have a, a city like that, all right, and you said it's one of the richest, in, you know, in the United States. Per capita income is the exactly. highest in the United States. But when you have a million people, and now it's less than 600,000 people, it, it was called white flight, but today it is uh, the middle class, the affluent are just moving out of the city. City can't pay the bills if you don't have money coming but, in. But, but again, you're isolating the um, effect from the cause. That's and, correct. And, and you're misidentifying the effect as the cause. The cause for Detroit was that public employee unions and private unions drove business out of this, that city. It's, it's not as if we don't manufacture cars anymore in no, the United I States. That. We manufacture I them in right-to-work states, Alabama. Tennessee. Oh, here we go with right and, to and, work. And oh, God. even Michigan now has right to work for less. Is e e what you're saying? E actually, I'm not saying that. Yeah. No, no, would I? Because I like to be truthful. Um, it, it, <laughs> 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 well, well, even Michigan has become a right to work state now because they understand that they don't have any leeway anymore. They have to bring business back. New Hampshire's still coasting along, saying. Uh, we can we can not have this labor reform because coasting we're along. we're a rich state. But but meanwhile, our manufacturing base is falling apart. Coasting along, we're I'll doing tell you what, I went to South Carolina. Good as a result Hampshire. as a result of two years of, of Republican yeah. reforms from 2010 no. to well, 2012. We were doing pretty good before you guys came in. Actually, and New Hampshire, actually weren't. Actually and, New, weren't. and New Hampshire is one of those states that is small enough 
and wealthy enough uh, where uh, the, a smart individual who needs a job uh, can usually get one except me, I need a job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having fun, that's the idea of yeah, it. You, you set yourself up for all these jokes I that I just that. pass along. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I, I was in South Carolina back in the summer, and um, the Boeing plant that they took from Washington is right. right near the airport. So I was with this doctor, and we're asking him how it's affected the area. And it's amazing what it's done for them. There, there really is almost no unemployment. If you want to work, yeah. you can work. Yeah, right, yeah. They, yeah. They, it's just amazing what it's done. Yeah. And so, and so this is a plant that Boeing put into those are South good Carolina jobs. Those are because not. it was a right to work state. And you're absolutely right. Those are twenty, thirty, forty dollar an hour jobs. Yes, but you and, guys and, are and the, and the union, the Boeing union, um, threatened to shut down the whole company because they put that, that plant there. You you needed unions back obviously when they started with sweatshops and everything else it's, just, it's like anything else it, you, people get their dirty fingers in it and figure out a way that they can make money and the, and the thing that's really sad about it it's not really the union worker that's making all the money it's the bosses it's the management they're making all the cash the other guys are getting you know fair wages look uh, you you guys can say anything you want and and i probably could turn around and take your side and, and talk against unions as much as i would talk for unions look no matter what you do, there has to be organization. Maybe the organization is choice. not going to be the same as it always was. The times are changing. But unions have built this country. Now, you're under, you guys are saying now it's tearing this country down. Is that what you're saying? It absolutely it is. Well, I disagree with you. And, I, and w the way you could prove that, first of all, why they would ever come up with a, a whole, you know, show how you vote. Well, what's that called, the, the actual name of the card, show your voting card? Card check. Card check. That right there is absurd. It's almost like our voter ID, and, which and, we're going to So let, me, let me make sure that the viewers know what a card check is. Card check says that if you can get 50% uh, plus one person of, of a company to sign a card saying, I want a union, then you have a union in it. So what, what that amounts to is five union goons arriving at some guy's house saying, Sign the oh, card. Oh, for God's sake. That's, that's what it, that's actually. 1930s, no, uh, no, 40s, and no. now the goons showing up at your house. For Five God's guys sake. showing up at your house saying, sign this card. And then they, and, and all we want, all we did in, in New Hampshire when we were in uh, the majority, is to say, fine, you get the card signed, we're going to have a, an election supervised by the National Labor Relations Board, supervised by a federal government agency to make sure that it's a secret ballot election. And, and, and that's opposed by unions because, Ken, why else would they oppose <laughs> exactly. it other than the fact that it can send five goons to your house if and say, so Ken, great, everyone sign the card. I probably know them all. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, come on in, have a coffee. Yeah, okay, like well, four goons plus yeah, Ken. Four, four goons plus, <laughs> oh, okay, this is what I get. Come on, Democrats, come on. I mean, you know, yeah, there's Ken, only two of you. That's Ken, you'll good. be the brains of the operation. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, right now. That, that sounds all well and good, but hey, guys, come on. Uh, you, you know, you're talking completely against unions as if they have absolutely no use. You're thinking that uh, all these states uh, are, are, you know, are going to benefit for it. Let's look at New Hampshire for an example. You have Walmart who have, for 30 hours, they've always had people at 30 hours, always had people 30 hours. They're showing them how to go and get unemployment benefits. They're showing them how to get food stamps. This is a place that doesn't have a union, but because their union within their, their philosophy is, is hurting the entire state of New Hampshire. You don't think a union would be beneficial there? Well, what about the people is, who buy the products? The way, the way they could do the things they're doing is because they can have lower prices on products. And a lot of people need to buy those things. buying the product? I, because we can't make them here because we have unions, and, and so we can't you, compete no, no, with no. them. No, no, no. The unions have tried to say, hey, bring it back. And they're not coming back. You're under the impression it's the unions why they took off. Is that what you're saying? No. That's Companies a, left this? The, the reason why they can't, we can't compete in manufacturing, I actually voted for Ross Perot twice because of this thing that he said, using Manchester as an example. Let's take the mills that we have in Manchester that are all vacant now. Let's start making T-shirts and the sneakers, the, the mills that were on the river. They're not, they're not vacant. Well, 
as manufacturers they are. No, there's non-union no, jobs. They're, they're, they used to be union jobs, up. now oh, they're filled up with non-union jobs. What I'm getting at Good is, jobs, instead in of, cases. we're going to go into another subject now, but instead of EBT cards, the way they're being used, go work for it. Go there, show them a way to become involved in something, maybe get in management someday, maybe get 401ks, but do it at cheap labor rates instead of giving it to China. Those are things you could do with stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's interesting because there are companies that are coming back and they're using a lot of robotic, uh, you know, uh, instruments and, and things are changing. People I've, are, I've, I've, they are coming back because of China wants more money. No, they're coming back because of uh, robots too. I know robots don't join unions, so you don't have to worry about them oh, uh, striking on oh, you or, God, or uh, work so slowdown or, or work, work rules where you have to go and to the back room and get another robot to pick up that that uh, tool because this one can, you know. It's, that, that, look, let, let look you, you I just I just bought a couch that was made in America and I don't think robots made. Well, they've been making couches down in North Carolina actually for a long time, um, and, and that hasn't ceased. You mentioned the EBT cards. Those are electronic benefit transfer cards. Correct. And what this is is a um, payment mechanism for people who are on welfare where they put all their benefits onto what looks like a credit card. And part of this, the reason for it is it's just so darn embarrassing to use food stamps in front of people in the supermarket. But the end result of it is that um, they, the cash gets on there. It all can be dealt with as cash, and, and uh, people were found have abused it. And I, I know you were really concerned about this when we were in the majority. Um, and it's going to come up. You know, there's, there's some, I, I know I'm going to be sponsoring a bill that will take the cash component out of EBT first. Wondering what your thoughts are. On Again, you know, I guess it's the way you grow up. I mean, if you if you are on tough times, it's supposed to be as the saying goes: it was a hand up, not a hand out. And what we've done now is we created a way of life. And unfortunately, for a lot of people that are in that environment, if that's the way your parents are raising you, that's what you're going to think, and you oh, get generations of it. You guys, well, well, no, I, you can't oh, deny you're, it. You're going right across the board as if this is factual. And when you when they turn around and they make the cards instead of using coupons, that is because there are a lot of people who would like a hand up, not a hand out, and because it's very embarrassing. But it is the Republicans, I believe, who what forty billion dollars from the food stamp program. Think about that, guys. I mean, you know, you're talking about Ken, cards. Ken, it can't always go up. It's it's doubled in the last five years. Why? Doubled. Why? Yeah, not you think because it's a of way of life. Yes. At yes. thirty, in a lot of cases, it is. Thirty-three dollars a week. It's it's a lot more money than that. Well, I believe look, 30, look, they, they, per they, purse is thirty-three dollars a week. Can you, you could you, you live you, on thirty-three dollars a week? Remember that report that came out about a month or two ago that says that the average family of four in New Hampshire on welfare would have to earn in excess of $50,000 a year to get the same um, lifestyle as well as pay taxes for it. That's what we've done. We've, we've put the... And you know, you've added you know, pay you know, the taxes you know, to it. I, yes, and, I understand and, 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 you know, that. Let's and you know, make that clear. You, you know, the problem with that, Ken, is just not that hardworking taxpayers are being burdened by that. It's, it's as, as Pete was saying, is you're, you're consigning people to a life that's, of that's poverty. That's the bad part. Because on, who among days, them can... And in fact, it was a Democrat. It was, it was Clinton who, who broke that up completely and said, that's not going to be a way of life. No, and these no. are the things well, you've you know got to You've got to work the 20 hours. All of a sudden, you guys are bringing... These are, these are can, old can, things can, coming So what's back. the Democratic Obama, Party Obama done for African Americans? Obama ended up away with that, remember? What's, what's, what's the Democratic Party done for African Americans? Look what they've done to them. Uh, That's, they've been Democrats what are you for, saying? Look, look, who lives in Detroit? Would you call it the white exodus, or would you call it? Well, I don't used? think you want to bring up African Americans because it's you guys in Florida who are closing down the polls early, <laughs> having less polls Ken, open. Ken, I Ken, mean, come on. Ken, Ken, none of that is true. But what is true is that the Obama administration, as its first act, got rid of the voucher program in Washington, D.C., the Educational Voucher Program. That was a program that allowed African-American <clears throat> families and their kids to take the amount of money, and it's a lot of money. It's 30, over $30,000 per student in Washington, D.C. They could take the money and go get a private education with it. And, and because Obama and the Obama administration was beholden to unions in order to get elected, it gave that sop to the National Education Association. It did away with that 
that hurt and the African Americans. You know, Americans. It's, it's, quite that, that, it's quite interesting when I hear that all of a sudden the Democrat uh, really does something that changes things around and saves us money. And yes, it does hurt a particular group, all groups of no, people. No, that's not what he did all. of a sudden, that, you that guys are saying, they, that gee whiz, that's awful. That they wasn't took care of the teachers' union. union. They took care of the teachers' union. They did it for one reason oh, only. the unions again. They did it for one reason <laughs> oh, only. Oh, it was is because the NEA is one of the biggest contributors to Democrat national politics in the country. And so they said, Thank and you, thank you, they, NEA. I know, but what, you know, I'm kind of missing a point here. You, you definitely guys, miss a lot of points. Now, wait a minute. If you guys, oh, of course, uh, but you guys are uh, Republicans, and all of a sudden, uh, here in New Hampshire, you guys are out. Right across the country, more were out. Now, no, now are you majority, saying are you it's the about? unions Control the houses. that are the, it's the, the majority, unions? The majority of, of state governor, uh, governors are Republicans. The, ma so the, the majority of, of state legislatures are Republicans. What do you, we're not out. You know, these, you know, people understand on a state level, when you get out of, out of the, the hot light of national demonization um, and they get down to state levels, people understand these well, are just I mean, common if you, if, sense if, approaches. If people don't think what, you've been demonizing unions, I mean, come on. And then you went after you Obama, know, you, being him being a black person, taking money away from uh, minorities. What does I mean, it have come to on. do with a black person? What is that? You're <laughs> the one who brought it up. I didn't bring you it say minorities. Minorities. a black person. Where's his race card? <laughs> you're, pull, you're pulling it out already? Jeez, we're only halfway through the show and you're pulling it out? No, I, I didn't person. say that. You did. You I, said minorities. No, you said, you said well, Obama's a black person. What, what difference does that make? Well, because you brought it up as minorities, and everybody no, seems to we be... We said the Democratic Party has... The, they've been following the Democratic Party for all these years, and what have they done for them? Nothing. And they've hurt them. Nothing. They've hurt them. This, the welfare you, system... Wait, 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 the welfare wait, wait, system wait, wait. consigns oh, hold, hold uh, many I, African Americans I, to poverty. Are you guys trying to tell me that Barack Obama and the, the, the Democratic administration has been hurting... The United States of America and the minorities—they're not helping them. Have, not, do, do, have they been really? Under, have they been more hurting? jobs uh, are like now what? available? No, no, the highest no, unemployment rate is black men. We've, we've, we've had the most anemic. We've had the most economy going on. We've had the most anemic recovery of any post World War II recovery of, uh, of our, our economic systems. In, in, the in, highest in, unemployment rate is between of young black males. So yeah. I don't know where's that come from. He's too busy playing golf. But you know what? Let's talk Who's about this thing. No, no, don't get in the golf and ball and bane or I want, I want to talk He's about something right now. I, I want to make sure we talk about pro notification because that's really up my craw because that's going to come back again. And I need the viewers to know what happened. In the midnight hour of 2006, the first time that the Democrats took over since what? Like the Civil War. Yeah. Um, they, the first thing they did, the very first thing they did is they passed a bill to take away your rights as a parent to know if your minor daughter, however old she could be to get pregnant, the age doesn't matter, could get an abortion without their knowing it. Now this has, the, what the and cleverly... The argument the, was what? The, what was me, the argument? Let, just me, be, just let me finish because, explaining right, the bill. All right. The thing is, it, it, what they tried to do is twist it. It's nothing to do with abortion. I'm in surgical sales. I go into the OR. It's in orthopedics. But this is a medical procedure that can have complications. So the height of asininity is to think that there's one parent, if you put a lie detector on them, and they're not a member of uh, Planned Parenthood or the Democratic Party, would say, no, go ahead. You can perform that procedure on my daughter without telling me. I don't, I don't really care about it. But then here's the real kicker. If something happens afterwards, and you're going to take that kid to the emergency room, oh, now it's your kid. Now, now you're responsible. I mean, you can't make these things up. So this is the classic example of the bathroom bill, where one thing goes from, you know, when, when they try to say about women's rights and right to choose and all that, it is, it, it's their right to do what they want to do with their body. But the point is, not my daughter. Not until she's done out of my house, and I have full responsibility until she's 18, why are you going to do that? Yeah, one it's of the insane. couple of the arguments were oh, okay, incest. So, yeah, and that happens a lot. That's in, incest. the majority. So, so, so you understand when rape. 
You, so you understand from a family member. You understand. You want to you educate. You, you want to. You want to get these parents involved. Let me ask this. you this. You understand there was a judicial bypass. All a young woman has to say, or a young child has to say, is I'm pregnant because of a male member of my family. And at that point, they can go in front of a judge, and Correct. the judge will substitute for the parent, so that the and child is protected. And then what will happen to the family? A young lady uh, in a family, a good family, all right? Like, and I believe you have a good family. You have a good family. There are women in my family, all right? Hopefully, if there was a problem like that, they would come to us. There are situations where it's not like that. One parent family, uh, the situation is uh, uh, just awful. So then what about so this? You, you, so, so I want to hear. So, so that your conclusion is that a child should be able to go to an abortion clinic, get an abortion, and the child should be able to make a decision on her own not to tell her parents. No, and, and what, adults, I, no, adults, no, adults what, should I, what I just said is that I believe the women in our family would come to us. No, no but the, you're under you're 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 turning around and trying to get me to say that I believe that all, no, nothing ladies, can do all. That's the part. This is the twist that I'm not going to let you get off the hook on. You you take these examples and you use, for example, we start with gay marriage, one percent to ninety nine. I'll give you your six percent. I didn't 6%. say ninety nine, but. What, what I'm saying, that would be the, that's my math, I'm pretty good. One okay. percent will leave 99. So the 99, their opinions doesn't mean anything. The one percent means everything. If you're really going to tell me that you think it's more common that a, a, a girl, not a woman, in this state is getting abortion, because most of them are girls, because they got raped by their father or their Uncle Joe, or is it because they had too much fun with Johnny the quarterback in the backseat of, of the car after the football game? That's where the abortions come from, and that's where parenting comes in, not the state, not the government. You should have that right, and you know what? If you're not capable as a parent, it's not my fault either, but to go and have a general blanket thing, we had kids coming from Massachusetts, from Vermont, from Maine. I mean, it's, here you go. Here's 200 bucks, go get it. Well, we could go on and, and argue this till the, the cows come home uh, here in New Hampshire, which would be a long time we lost all our cows. Uh, but the fact is, uh, I could take your side too. I think that parents should be notified, but there's a great problem there. I almost believe there should be an intermediate there, where a girl can go and say, look, this is, this is a problem that I'm, that I'm possessing. But how about if a parent turns around and says, no, I don't want my daughter to have an abortion. Listen, the now what? L listen. The, and that's the, then the, the daughter goes then, to the then judge. The then go to the judge. But, but listen, you know, my, my dad was a colonel in the army, and I got to tell you, when I was 15, 16, and 17, I didn't want to go talk to him about a lot of the things I might have been doing. You know, I'd get in trouble. That's the way it is to be a young person, and, and I, I would have to, and I'd control my behavior, and, and, and he would uh, bring me up as a child. This is basically saying the state is more important than the family when, when we don't have a parental notification law. It's coming up again. Uh, the choice to, of voters of Ward 8 is to vote for someone who's going to it's make sure... It's coming up again, meaning you're going to bring it up. No, no. A member of your party is, is going to bring this bill forward to repeal parental notification. You want to know why? Because plan... Parenthood there you go. Northern oh, New England. Follow the money. It, it gives money to the Democrat Party. Oh. And just as Obama oh, tipped his hat to the NEA and by getting I, rid of the voucher program, the, Democrats in New Hampshire are going to tip their hat to the, the plan, Planned, Planned Parenthood, Parenthood by trying to get rid of parental cares for men. It, 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 cancer it, screening for men. It actually doesn't do it that. Goes, it goes. You know, that's so many lies. For men. There's so many lies. I remember, I remember men. them come. It's I, always women. It's an abortion. It has it's, nothing. It's, it's, an just, abortion it's just an abortion. abortion. That's it what is. Planned Parenthood does absolutely they, they, nothing they, for men. They came in, for example, Read to our it. committee saying, "Oh, we do mammograms." It turns out they don't. It was a fiction. We do Pap smears. Planned they don't. Parenthood it's a doesn't do. No, it's, it was. It doesn't do pap smears. They make their money would from you, abortions. Uh, wait a minute, excuse me. W would you, could I get another $100 to your favorite you know, charity <laughs> you know, on this one? What, what they Planned do. Planned Parenthood doesn't what, do any of that what, stuff. What they, what they do, for example, as films have shown that came out of Ohio, Planned Parenthood, help protect adult abusers of children who get them pregnant. Then that's, uh, that's documented in films which, uh, where young girls have gone in with adult men, little 15 year old girls going to 22, 23 year old boyfriends, and been counseled by Planned Parenthood, in this case of Ohio, 
don't tell me the age of this person because I'm required to report rape. And so we can, well, don't tell me this. And well, by the way, we'll so help you get fine. your uh, oh, all right, okay, and, and, you know, So that's wait, why it's wait, so wait. important to have parents involved. Because if your parent is being, if, you're, if your child, rather, is being abused by an adult male, you need to know all, that. You need all to I can tell you is... So <laughs> let you... me see. You're for Ward 8, and you're running to, for re-election. You're against unions. You're against Planned Parenthood. You're against union bosses. Yeah, okay? union bosses. You know, well, you're against unions. That's all we talked about. And what else? Uh, food stamps? You're against food stamps? I'm, I'm for reforming the EBT system. Uh, okay. I don't, think you should be, they... I don't think you should be able to buy cigarettes and booze. No, I don't either. I don't think you, you get, should drive you by a place and in no, Hudson and, and, and you... that's a, a, a high-end butcher shop and have a, a, a sign in his window. I have a picture oh. of it on my phone that says EBT cards welcome. I don't think Shaw should be having say, come get lobster with the EBT card. No, I don't. I don't believe that. I, I think that you should have to live within your means of what we can supply to help you. You, you shouldn't be going buying Louis Vuitton bags and all of this stuff you know, and going you, to Foxwoods. You, you can't do it. You turn around and, and make comments like that, but you know something? Here we have these, these you know, food pantries that are completely empty. People who work there are now using the food yeah, pantries. You should they use have absolutely nothing. Not everybody uses use the cards. Use it for food. You're under the impression that <clears throat> a lot of people do. You go to BJ's and, and you go to Sam's and they call it EBT Day. Now you gotta buy a membership to get in BJ's. You go there and they actually, the workers call it EBT Day, which is the first, I think it's Tuesday of the month. That's when the char cards get charged up. That's when the up. cards get charged up. Oh, don't come today, it's EBT Day. That's what they call it. Don't come today. In other words, there's gonna be a lot of lines because it's EBT I Day. I belong to Sam's and I belong go to ask BJ's and I, I have never. You. Had that. Happen. I challenge you to go to BJ's. Well, I, I, I have to tell you, speaker, we, I had we, people come in and talk to me about that. We we have store another hundred dollar store owner. Oh, I'll bet you a grand right, on okay, that one. So you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know that. Well, I, this is a first. This is a first I've heard. So you're under the impression that everybody has these cards. No, there you go with everybody are abusing again. Using them. Well, I mean, this is what you're saying. Everybody. What so, was the number we so had the, steaks, of the? Of the um, Meat? Fraud that we had in District of New Hampshire was yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, so, so so we did a run, a free run of uh, by Lexus Westlaw, West Lexus, whatever it was, Nexus Lexus. Nexus and, Lexus. And, and and so basically, what it did is it took a look at the EBT card, the food stamp recipients in New Hampshire. You know what they found, Ken? That ten percent of them, ten, over ten percent, just slightly over ten percent, listed as primary addresses someplace outside of New Hampshire. I don't believe you. I don't believe that. <laughs> that the, I don't you believe can choose that. Not to. No, I'll tell you what. You you bring that 10%. in because I don't believe it. You're you're saying ten percent of a of, well, of everyone Peter is, was is in on that not yeah, yeah. only abusing it. They're coming in from another state. You no, know, what that means is that they're getting EBT cards from a couple more of more than one state. And we had a supermarket owner come in from Ips, New Ipswich and and talk to me as speaker and said, you know, I don't know what I I have had people come and present in their own name a Massachusetts EBT card. And a, and a New Hampshire EBT card. I call up the fraud line at Health and Human Services, and I said, what do we do? Which one do I take? Should I take any? Do you want to know the name of this person? And they said, take both of them. It's not for you to enforce this. Hung up. That, that's the, that's okay, the you abuse know, you of know, the EBT card. I know, card. but that, this is not, the, you, you, what you're talking can. about is the, an absolute minority, and it's not 10%. I it don't it, care it, what you're it is 10%. No, I don't care what you say. It's not it 10%. is 10%. He knows 10%. more. He knows. But yeah. the minority always, uh, no matter what it is, there's always going to be corruption if there's a way. We, we found to many EBT so cards were being used in Florida over the winter time. You could track their use, and, and around November, October, the use if would suddenly show your, up in Florida, continue there down to, to March, okay, and then come so back into the state. So you're saying that people what? People are wealthy enough to go to Florida, but they're using their cards down there. The, people are wealthy enough to go to Florida and use their cards down there. That's okay, exactly that's what. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the that's facts what show. Doing. We we found one woman who had an EBT card. You know where she lived? In a condo in Miami that was assessed at 1.3 million dollars. Another person who was getting an EBT card had just bought a Cadillac Escalade. Anybody, There's need for reform. There's need for a representative to work around on and find an absolute uh, awful 
and things that are taking place in every single program, maybe we ought to take these people out and shoot them. Now, I don't mean shoot right. them like kill them. Take them out, shoot them in the foot with a BB gun, you know, take them out in the morning, I, do it on. I've often let's suspected just stop that it. Democrats hate poor people the way they Jeez. keep them poor. But, but, you know, for you to say I we ought to kill them. I beg your pardon. Yeah, to say that I we ought to shoot, shoot them in the foot with a BB gun. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think we ought to shoot them. Yeah, I mean, just... a, oh, no, okay, now this is going to be, I it's want a bazooka. Record. Now it's going to be, I want a bazooka. <laughs> RBG. You know, I need a nuke. I want to go get a, a state. No, no, we don't. You we, Republican. We want to empower telling. them in their free market system to, to, to get out of poverty. No, no, there's no need to shoot so them. So Democrats have not really done anything other than cause. Is They're holding them down. Holding them down. So it's Democrats are holding them up. 100%. 100%. So it was Democrats who voted you out, and now you want to come back. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, you're from... It wasn't Democrats that necessarily represented my ward. It was Democrats that were same-day registers that came there to vote for Obama, which he did a really good job through electronic media, through things like that, of getting people out to vote that had no clue they are voting for. The people who cared, vote, and a lot of Democrats voted for me. And as I said, I had more votes last time than I ever had. By almost 200, I believe, but it wasn't enough to well, overcome was, same day registers. Well, it was. It was. When it's a you know a, you know a presidential election is always the same. And well, they no, my they first was Democrats a presidential. Democrats came out and voted for Democrats right across the board. My first election was a Democratic election with Obama in 2008, and I happened to win. So, the the point is, I think now this is a city election. People who are really paying attention to the issues are the ones who are going to vote. They're not going to get the Obama phone people this coming out. This is a Ward A election. Correct. Right. And so, but it's a city election though that day. Well, let me say something nice about you, okay? Because I've been all right. Uh, you have always been polite to me when you guys were the majority. Both of you have been. And believe me, when I thought of having Mr. O'Brien come on to the show, one of the reasons why is because he was nice to me. And I think you have been vilified in many ways, which I don't happen to agree with. Now I get to know you, and other, hopefully other people get to know you. I think you would make a good candidate. The problem is, is that this, it's the entire Republican Party that is a problem. Look at what's taking place in Washington. They're going to fund the government, except they're going to not want to you know, fund Obamacare. So that means the government will shut down. Forty billion dollars on food stamps because you know what, what you're saying. What is, what? Is Forty. No, this has something to do with it because what we're talking about is we're talking Republican and Democrat. Why is there only one side of that equation in Washington? In other words, if if President Obama won't go along with um, not funding the the uh, Obamacare, he's making the decision to shut down the government. There's two me. sides to that equation. It's, you have a disagreement over whether Obamacare should be so, funded. So, and so one side's being blamed for having a position well, on that. The other they, side doesn't get Why don't the Republicans come along and say stuff like, you know something, in, a, in our... You know, in our health care thing, we will let kids stay on their parents' uh, insurance till they're 26. We will we, not we, let... We, we had that, we in, will not we had let, that in Hampshire before we, Obamacare. We, will we not already let, had that. Yes, and that's, that's because of the committee that I was on. You, know you, you don't want to debate Obamacare because <laughs> no. that's my field. Pardon so me? You don't want to debate Obamacare, but that's my field, but we will. So let, what are, the, what are your three... Have, what we are really your three, don't have time. What are your three favorite things about Obamacare? What do you like the most about it? Give me three good things. About Obamacare? Yeah. Uh, a, well, I, one is enough. Uh, everybody can get insurance. And I can argue, take part of your part, too, because the insurance companies are charging like $5,000 deductibles, OK? So guess what? This is like you know, winning the lottery for the insurance companies. You break your arm, it's $4,000. You lose your work. You still have to make up. The, so this is not working out exactly the way that it's supposed to work out. Uh, existing uh, illnesses for uh, parents who have children and now no insurance where they end up in bankruptcy. And Obamacare is maybe just the skeleton of what we possess, and hopefully the Republicans will get in there and make some good adjustments. So again, so how's but you're saying you shouldn't for, have. You're, uh, you're, you're saying we shouldn't have? Any care for, for our citizens? This is what I'm saying to you. The two biggest things that you, we need health care reform. We desperately need it. The two biggest things are not in the bill. Do you know what they are? No. One of them is tort reform. 
So in my field, what happens right now is I give you an example. Newton Wellesley Hospital, I've been going there for years. The, the orthopedic division here, there's about 35 doctors, it's big, between, they do all service. This is, it's gotta be 15 years ago. I remember the office manager telling me that their docs spend an average of one to two days a month in deposition, just doing deposition. So what happens when you get tort reform? For those who wanna do the math, what's the percentage, no offense Bill, but what's the percentage of politicians at the federal level that are lawyers? 95? So tort reform, what's gonna happen is, you can sue whoever you wanna sue, but if you lose, you pay then all of a sudden this guy with the phony back injury or the guy that's getting the little ticket to, to, because his arm, you know, he can't go back to work, that stuff's gonna get cut in half. The second and probably the biggest thing is you gotta have interstate trade with insurance. And I'll give the we example. Agree, we agree with that. Well, let's that's use fine. this cell phone as an example. Yeah. When I first had my cell phone because I needed it with my job back in the early 90s, I was paying over a grand a month for that thing because it was one company, AT&T. All of a sudden, now there's how many? I don't know, hundreds. If you pay more than 100 bucks a month for your cell phone, now you're a moron. So those two things, let's see. Why is not interstate trade for insurance in there? Well, then the insurance lobbies. Th those are the things that no one talks about. You want to reform health care. Start there. Then well, maybe I'll uh, talk about something yeah, else. Yeah, okay. Well, tort reform sounds really good to, to people out there, but the problem is uh, statistics are something like, guess what? Uh, if you lose a leg because of a poor operation or you, you lose an arm, you get a quarter of a million dollars, but the doctor will take you to court, then you need a lawyer, so by the time you get done, you maybe have $100,000 without an arm. That's what they're talking about, tort reform. I understand that. And you wanna know something? It really comes down to the insurance companies uh, not paying attention. And what's taking place, part of it, I agree with you. In fact, there is a bill coming up, we won't get into it right now, that uh, I'm putting together with somebody else that has something to do about us as uh, officials, uh, nuisance suits brought against us, yeah, brought against lawyers, brought against judges, brought against everyone, nuisance suits, where people can come in and just do a suit against you for no reason. Put an attachment on your house, which you don't even know about until you go to the cellar. <coughs> so to a degree, that's... I'm agreeing with you, but we've got about three minutes left, two minutes left. Say something, and, and, I, and I'm 100%. I'm uh, you've always been good to me. You've always been good to your, to your party. I just, just disagree with the Republicans, but have the last two Well, minutes. Kenny, you and I agreed on one bill with the Student Teacher Protection Act. We agreed on that one. That's, we? we did, and it's coming up again. And that's an important bill in Nashville, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. it's kind of where it started. I mean, right. teacher got hit in the face with a three-hole punch the day we passed it in the house. Yeah. So, so why don't you just, uh, if you take the last few minutes or so, sure. I guess we don't have yeah, much no, time no, at no, all. No, we don't. Just we don't. to say why you're running and, and what this election's all about. Well, please. I think that people can gather from now that um, fiscally, we, we just can't take our eye off the, our hands and our eyes off the, the wheel on the road. It, because you go through these changes every two years. So every two years you can get another group in there that wants to change things that you put forth. It isn't, laws are never forever. They can be changed. So I think people know that um, through my record, which is what I can show, there's no fluff. You can go look it up for four years how I voted. Every vote I ever made, which was a high percentage, by the way, because I was there to vote, they're there on every controversial bill. I didn't take any walks. I didn't take any ducks um, that where I stand on the social issues, I'm, I'm conservative right down the line. And I think that that's what we need in that sense. You know, I hear the things that came out with me about, you know, women's rights and all that, and, you know, th the article the day after. I have two daughters and a wife, and I, I think they probably think I treat them pretty well. So it's just cut through all the, the, the fluff, and when you get right down to it, everybody wants the same thing. You want to raise a, a family in a healthy neighborhood, you want to make sure your schools are strong. You want to make sure your government isn't blowing money so there's something there when you come back. I know it's cliche, but it's true. If we don't just tighten our belt and realize it's a tough time right now. You know what, little Johnny, maybe you can't have the brand new tricycle this year. Maybe we can go get you one at the secondhand store if you don't have the money. You can't just always get the brand shiny new things in these times. Phone number? Yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, um, you can go on my website or on my uh, email, actually, which is uh, Pete Silva State Rep. 
and um, that's at gmail.com or my home phone is 888-0558. Be glad to talk with you. you on Facebook? We'll be knocking on it and I do have a Facebook page. Oh. And Bill? And, and one of the things I just want to say quickly, and, and th I think Ken, you illustrated it, is that when Pete was up there, he was expressed, uh, appreciated on, on both sides of the aisle. It was a great deal of respect for you. So let's hope you get back up there again and can join Ken and me up there. Um, uh, this, again, you can call me anytime you want. Cell phone number is 620-8710. Uh, email address is williamlobrien at gmail.com. Uh, Contact me anytime. Ken? All right. Ken Gidge at, uh, well, email, uh, kgidge at aol.com. I also have a website, which is an art website, Gidge World. And uh, home telephone number is 603-864-9332. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah, for thank having me, guys. Have you had really fun? It. it was have great. You had fun? It was great. Oh, we can do it again. Some of, our, some of our programs, yeah, really. <laughs> okay, thank you. Next time. Take care. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.